and now when you when you were in prison, was it something that was easy for you? Like, cause you're able, you were able to give khutbas, right? No, I'm sorry. So was that something that the, the prison made easy for you to give khutbas? And also, were you giving lessons as well? Or the thing is, I was just this open book. When mm-hmm. I first got into the uh, federal prison system, it was a brother, brother named Yahya. Mm-hmm. Hafidu Allah, man. Wherever he is at, man. You know, may Allah preserve him. Yeah, I mean. He was a white brother. Mm-hmm. And he went through painstaking efforts to maintain some structure. Mm. But, you know, unfortunately, race plays a very significant part in how people receive you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you got a prison full of African Americans and a few foreigners are out of the really sprinkling, take them they, but he used to, you know, he used to frequent more with foreigners, mm. you know, what I'm saying people who were born Muslims, yeah, you know, Pakistani, Arabs, whatever the mm. case may be, for whatever reasons they were there, don't really matter. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the um, African American brothers looked at that as, you know. A issue yeah okay even though they didn't really open doors for him yeah to come and be in a mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. so it was just kind of an oxymoron okay yeah. so when i got there i started kind of like as like an assistant imam I was okay like, you know what what i'll do i'll help you compile some things that i think would be beneficial so he was also an inmate yeah he was an inmate. okay and he was so he was the one who was given dawah at first well, he was pre- actually he was actually entrusted with the religious affairs of the community. So he's like the he chaplain. Was the imam. He was like the chaplain. No, he was the imam. Oh wow! Because okay. the chaplain they bring from outside. Yeah, he's the chaplain. Pretty much is a cop. Uh huh. You know yeah. He worked yeah. for the federal government. <laughs> so you know, according to government society, he's yeah. like, I'm really loud. We had a good we had a good guy. You know, his name was um, what was his name? Subhanallah. <laughs> it's crazy because he was a, he was actually. He actually was a good brother. He, yeah. he didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. You know, the strongest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying as far as knowledge goes, but he was very wise, in you know, um, assisting the community to function. You know, without his involvement. You mean the chaplain who they had chaplain. involved? Yeah. Now the chaplain thing. This is kind of off topic, but yeah. How like when you're in prison, right? The chaplain thing. I'm still kind of wrap my trying to wrap my head around. From what I understand is. From what people have told me who worked in the prisons is that when you go in as a chaplain you're yes you're a muslim but you're not really for the muslims you only. have to facilitate all faiths so if they ask like even a guy told me directly he said if uh if i um uh a devil worshiper needs help with his his worship you have to help facilitate you have that. to facilitate that, that that's a very slippery slope now it used to be um a chaplain before the guy that um, I was mentioning. Mm-hmm. His name was Abdul Rahman. Mm-hmm. Now he was firm. Mm-hmm. So what happened was when these uh, uh, other inmates who had to, I guess, set up their ibadah or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. he would get out their way. Like, you mm-hmm. can do your own thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm but when the Muslims, you know, yeah. so he filled the position, but he abstained from. Kind of like found his way yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and and that was actually probably one of the reasons why he's no longer in the prison. Uh, because, because if you don't do yeah. what they're saying, then automatically they got to... You know, al wala al It goes yeah, both yeah. ways, man. Yeah. So, I, like, I mean, them jobs are serious. Like like you said, it's a federal job. So yeah. you go in, they're looking at your social media. They're looking at what you say and do, what you teach. Absolutely. And if you start, te- yeah, if you start no. teaching like wala al yeah. I'm sure you'll probably be removed nah, in a second. Straight away. Start talking straight about away. the Christians. Start talking about the Jews. Which, which shows the importance mm. of those inmates who are doing this job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I you're not restricted. I understood, mm-hmm. you know, the severity of, you know, statements and actions. Yeah. Mm. So, I figured that when we give the khutbah, you know, we focus on a lot of mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You focus heart on softness. like heart softness. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Stuff that would keep the brothers, you know, in good mood, in like good, in good faith. Yeah, in a good state. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you need that injection of course. every week. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Because throughout the week, you're dealing with prison. Of course. Yeah. So, because, you know, in prison, a lot of guys is known for being fiery and admonishers. Mm-hmm. Even in prison, it's like... It's like, like and, 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 and I'm not going... And I, not even trying to be funny. They get a lot of this. It used to come from some of the two lads. What they see. Yeah. Outside. Exactly. The a outside. lot of it came from the two lads. Mm-hmm. Because they're sitting in these reminders so to say 
that were beneficial at some time. But then there's sometimes stuff is going in the prison about who's on it and who's off it. And the last thing a person in, the the person in prison needs to be worrying about. Yeah. Another form of yeah, terrorism. Yeah, men hash issues yeah. that are taking place outside, outside of the prison. The prison. Did, you, you know did, did you see this taking place when you were in the prison? Absolutely. Like, did you see people like actually separating from the body of the Muslim? Absolutely. The the I he, and, and I used to <clears> send, <throat> you know, messages out, mm-hmm. you know, addressing this, mm-hmm. you know, but more so paying more attention to what was in proximity mm-hmm. and not get too overly invested, yeah, but yeah. still sending messages out like, listen, these brothers need to keep these issues, you know what I'm saying, wherever they may be. Us, on, us, us and a lot of these these issues should have never crossed the ocean. Exactly. No, they should yeah, <laughs> imagine, like, imagine, yeah. imagine doing hajar of someone in prison. Here outside, maybe you find someone else. Imagine doing hajar of your of your of your roommate, your cellmate. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I see, they it's had crazy. some spots that was actually trying to establish the hudu like they would catch brothers wow. drinking kama and want to give lashes in prison it's wow. like okay what? you can't get lashes in the street <laughs> that's crazy in the free world you can't get lashes so what but, did, so what but, did these brothers but see the, the thing is like i was saying not mm. to cut you off, i'm sorry yeah, yeah no you good the thing is that that's why i felt like what i was able to benefit from was you know it, it enabled me to kind of like keep things where they needed to be. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make it through a hardship mm-hmm. that Allah placed on us mm-hmm. for whatever reasons, whether it is known to us now or it'll come clear when we meet Allah. Mm-hmm. But we're dealing with a hardship. So the only way to navigate through this is to increase in ibadah, mm-hmm. you know, increase in you know, knowledge and understanding of Islam, mm-hmm. increase in brotherhood was more important than anything Allah. because a lot of times in prison, brothers would be trying to imitate the kufar when it comes to how their gang cultures and stuff is structured mm. so you may have certain consequences that may be prevalent amongst the gangs and you find brothers trying to push the same type of line on a brother and it's like okay, um, you can't do that to the brother yeah. nah, I, you know initiation yeah not even initiation <laughs> it's like he may might be an informant mm. Mm. Yeah. before he accepted Islam yeah he accepted Islam now yeah, you know you have to forgive that. It's, it, I'm, my thing is, like, Allah forgave it. Yeah. So who are y'all? And like, no. and like you want to see the brother paperwork. Well, Lahiaki, I never knew what no brother was in prison for unless they shared it with me. They yeah. had people asking for paperwork, like there was some. Like why? Why are you in prison? Because that's prison. That's how they treat you inside yeah, because prison. Because if if you have you a sex offender or something like that, you're gonna have a rough day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. It becomes a part of the culture to actually know what kind of individual you are. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, you have a more praiseworthy way of assessing someone's character when it comes to Islam. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's more so for, you know, the benefit of the dean. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. that's what I was saying about mm-hmm. how brothers was incorporating prison culture mm-hmm. into Islam. So a new Muslim would come in and they were like, show me your papers like this or what you in for. They try to check him sometimes. Some spots they was on that with the Muslims, mm-hmm. you know. But when I, you know, well, kind of let me let me give you this. Mm-hmm. So like with the brother Yahya, mm-hmm. I want to get to that point because this mm-hmm. is important to understand how I ended up in the position of mm-hmm. dealing with these matters mm-hmm. because in the back seat, remember I'm just helping you put together some football. Yeah, because really <laughs> yeah. you know, I see what's going on. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, this is not this is not the Islam I know. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I will try to advise when i could but it started Even Yahya himself he was on like some nah he was on it i was, mean he he, he loved was, the religion he loved the so he didn't have the he literally was a soldier hmm. who fought in iraq oh. mm. he actually physically evaded one of the fortresses of saddam hussein wow. mm. and he told me about i mean shrink wrap money up to the ceiling like he literally was yeah. boots on ground mm. yeah when they was you know, commandeering this man's wealth. Yeah. Mm. And to find out that he was sent on a mission that had nothing to do with, you know, the true purpose of why they were there. Yeah. This changed his heart. Mm. This man Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, this he, man, this man all you could find is <laughs> wealth to be taken. So he became Muslim there in Iraq. He became Muslim once he came home from uh, the war. Realizing. Realizing now that, because you already know, like, you know, all of the, the, the hostility has, you know, went down. It's like the war is over. Now you supposedly reaping the benefit of it. But mm-hmm. he's realizing, like, I might have just partook in something 
That's it was an atrocity. Yeah. And it's the law changed his heart. Allah so that's why he was like my closest Sahaba. Mm-hmm. You know, and I felt like I had to always shield him from some of the frustration that came with, you know, that the African American, mm-hmm. the position, but the African American Muslim. Because they's like, I hear, you know, you with the brother, man. Tell him, you know what I'm saying? This is not. Tell him that. It's like, how many times you want this man to get on the membar, you know what I'm saying, and describe himself to the Sunnah? You know, it was yeah. crazy. So yeah. ultimately, he was just like, okay, why don't you, you know, give a chutbah occasionally, just to kind of like I'm doing. Uh, so he started passing it off to you, pa- and then yeah. it just really just fell complete, and I, I, I ultimately became the imam. Now, uh, where did you spend most of your time? Which uh, prison? Um, well, in the feds, you move around a lot. So I started off at Butner, which is in North Carolina. I spent three and a half years there. Then I ended up going to Yazoo, which is in Mississippi. I spent about a little over a year, something there. Then I went to Estelle Medium in South Carolina. I spent maybe a little close to two years there. Wow. And I went to, I came home from Coleman. And so Coleman's where? Where's that? Coleman's in Florida. Mm. So, so Yahya was where with you? I'm sorry. Huh? Yahya, he was where? Which, Yahya which was in Butner with me. Okay. So I was in Butner. I became the imam at the low. Then I went to the camp. Mm. I was the imam there. I get the Yazoo, beautiful brother uh, uh, named Muhammad, man, Philistine. He was strong student. Mm. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> he was a hafiz in Quran. <laughs> he, he was very strong in, in Hadith. And he had studied in Egypt as well. Mm-hmm. But I never met him in Egypt. Mm. <laughs> there was another brother, Isan, who I speak to all the time. You know, he's in Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. You know, Bengali brother. He's a hafiz in Quran. Memorized Mashallah. several different shit are strong. So it was like the burden of being an imam in the previous prison got lifted because now <laughs> you got an imam now yeah, who's yeah. much more stronger than me. But then mm-hmm. I became the sharif. I became the head of the security. So now I'm really dealing with the fitting that comes with the yeah. physical aspect yeah, of yeah, prison. So yeah. people don't understand like all <clears throat> of this became applicable due to understanding the religion and dealing with certain so politics that's put in place so even as the head of security i was extremely diplomatic mm-hmm. yeah. so even the kufar would come to us to rectify their affairs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know what i'm saying and that came from you know level of trust apply, a level of trust but applying the sunnah exactly yeah. and being exactly. just exactly 